Whether you like it or not, alcohol dominates society. It is absolutely everywhere, and it doesn't matter what country you're in, what city you're in, what town you're in, it is highly, highly, highly likely that you will come across alcohol as you go about life. Whether that's somebody else that's drinking, whether that's a bar, whether that's a marketing message, a piece of content in the newspaper, whatever. The world that we live in has alcohol in it. It's going nowhere, it's here to stay, and that is just a matter of fact. But what is really going on here? Well, in today's video, I'm actually going to be breaking down the gimmick of drinking. This gimmick is paradigm shifting. It's mind altering because if you can bring awareness to the gimmick and the illusion of alcohol being a good thing, it can change the way that you view alcohol forever. And I know for a fact that a lot of people that are watching this video, it's, this content is just not for you. You're happy being an alcoholic or you're happy being a drinker. You don't want to stop drinking. And most importantly, you're not ready to start questioning your beliefs around alcohol. You've got this belief that alcohol is a good thing. You think that it helps you. You think that it does all of these amazing things for you in your life and you need it to relax and it's your reward, it's your friend, it's your buddy. And all of this stuff is just not true. And if you're not ready to face an opposing viewpoint, don't watch this video because I'm going to be going off the rails. I'm literally going to be sharing some of the deepest content around alcohol and around this gimmick of it being a good thing because at the end of the day, alcohol is a gimmick. It's a fancy marketed poison. It does nothing for anybody. It never has, it never will, and it never can. The same way that drinking bleach won't do anything for you. And when you're able to see that, and when you're able to see the gimmick that alcohol is, it's a done deal. You just don't want to drink it anymore. And very quickly, just before I get into this, I just want to get one thing clear. It's not for me to say for you to stop drinking. It's not for me to say what you should and shouldn't do with your body. It's your body. You can put whatever you want in your body. I've got no issues with people that drink. But what I do have an issue with are gimmicks. I have an issue with people that take advantage of vulnerable people that have an addiction, and I have an issue with people that are you know, pushing this idea that alcohol is a good thing. That's what I've got an issue with. I don't have an issue with what people put in their body. That's got nothing to do with me, none of my business. But as you're gonna see, as we get into this video, you will see what the issue is here because I'm gonna be sharing everything. I'm literally gonna be putting it all on the table and then at least you can then make an informed decision of whether or not the ideas of alcohol being a good thing are true or not. Because that's all I want for you. I want you to be able to make an informed decision whether or not you wanna stop drinking or whatever. It's not for me to say you should and shouldn't do this. Just before we get into the video, if you want to get access to the free video training showing you how to control your drinking without AA or willpower, click the link in the description. I'll be showing you how to use the mental model called first principles thinking to get control of your drinking. I'll be talking about the five critical mistakes that 90% of drinkers make, and I'll also be sharing the two phases of becoming sober clear. You do not want to miss that training video. It will change your mindset around drinking forever so you can start getting your health, career, confidence, and relationships back on track. Click the link in the description for instant access. So the world that we live in has this underlying tone that alcohol is a good Thing. This is permeated through our society. And what we don't really do is we don't look at alcohol as a drug. We don't see alcohol the same way that we see crack. We don't see alcohol the same way that we see heroin. We don't see alcohol the same way that we even see smoking cigarettes. We see alcohol as, as a genuine pleasure. We see it as a good thing. We see it as something that adds real value in the world. It adds value to our life. It helps us have a good time. It helps us do all of these things that we enjoy doing. And we don't see it as a drug. It's almost a dichotomy that we live in. We see drugs as one thing and alcohol as something completely separate, completely different. And why is that? Why does this idea of it being a good thing just permeate society? And I want to share a few examples of times where I've believed that alcohol was a good thing. And the reason why I believed it was a good thing was because of the inputs. And I'm literally going to break down three of those inputs right now. So the first thing that I actually want to touch on is my time during university. Now, I've never shared this before, but I think that there is a key lesson that will help you on your journey. When I went to university, I actually didn't drink at the beginning. So as you guys may already know, you know, I drank for close to 10 years, but it wasn't a consistent daily drinking or anything like that. I was on this roller coaster where I'd have these peaks and these troughs and there were times where I didn't drink. I'd use willpower, I might've gone to AA, whatever, and I didn't drink alcohol. Yet there were times where, you know, I was getting drunk five, six nights a week. I was blacking out, spending loads of money, just doing some stupid, stupid stuff. And it just wasn't behaving the way that I wanted to behave. But basically what happened is there was a time when I went to university and in university, I was still going through the same cycle. I went to university a little bit older. I was in my mid twenties when I started university. And like I said, there were times when I didn't drink there. Now, this is gonna sound very strange, but even the teachers at university 
pushed the idea that somehow, as a university student, you are supposed to drink. When people would come into class hangover, the university, the lecturers would laugh. Whereas, you know, just a, a year ago, you'd have been in a college or something like that, you'd gone into a lesson with a hangover, and your teachers would have slaughtered you. It was like a bad thing. Then all of a sudden, just a few months passes, and then you go into the real world. You go into the grown-up world. You're an adult now. And this is what adults do. You're no longer a kid. You've gone past college, you've gone past whatever it was there, and now you're at university. And now all of a sudden, people start treating you a hell of a lot differently. So I remember, you know, if I ever went in with a really bad hangover, my, the lecturers would kind of laugh. They'd be like, oh, you're a student. You know, this is what students do. And there was, okay, they might not have said that explicitly, but they always put that across. They'd laugh, they'd snigger, they'd, they'd joke around. It wasn't a serious thing. It wasn't like, dude, what are you doing? You've come here to study. It was like, no, you're a student. This is what students do. You're a first year student. You're a second year student. It's not so important. Have a fun, have a bit of a good time. That's what university is all about. And yet this idea of alcohol somehow enhancing an occasion, it starts getting pushed on you. Somehow this is fun. This is fun. Going out to a bar and getting shit faced drunk is a good thing. And is that really the case? Is getting blackout drunk while you're studying a degree a good thing? And it's almost like we're preparing ourselves to go into the, you know, the, the working world where you're gonna have a career. And you know, most careers revolve around alcohol. If you go and get a job after university in, in marketing, in law, in accounting, in whatever, it's very likely that your colleagues are gonna drink and this is just what people do. And it's almost like when you're at university, you're preparing yourself to go into a career where alcohol is gonna be there. I know that sounds a little bit weird. I'm not trying to make like some conspiracy or something like this. I'm just sharing my experience, right? There was a lot of drinking in university. Uh, and then what happened is I went into a, a job in a, long story short, like I'm, I'm gonna miss out a lot of my story for those of you guys that know it, but I went to a job in recruitment and um, recruitment, drinking culture, everybody's drinking, it's all about going out after work. And I imagine, you know, most careers are like that. Most careers are gonna revolve around alcohol, it's gonna revolve around teams going out for drinking. And when I was at university, I was never the wiser to actually question that. I was never the wiser to say, wait a minute, everybody's deluded. Like, why are we doing this? Why do we go out and drink? Why is this normal behavior? So really, the reason why I'm sharing this is because whilst I was at university, the times when I wasn't drinking, I was looking at these people, I was looking at the lecturers, I was looking at the people drinking, going out, partying, and I was getting this message and these, these inputs that somehow this is good, somehow this is fun, somehow this is interesting. And what do you think happened? Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to say that I just kept drinking. I would have moments where I didn't drink, but then a lot of the time I'd be drinking because apparently this is the normal thing to do. And just like I've said, it's that underlying message that alcohol is a good thing. Which leads me into the second place where we get conditioned to believe that alcohol is a good thing, and that's TV shows. And when I say TV shows, I actually mean the characters that are being portrayed in TV shows. Now, I, like, I'll just give one example. I can't really think of any examples right now, but James Bond, right? James Bond is sophisticated, he's smart, he's charismatic, and he drinks alcohol. It's like this thing that, you know, successful people have, and successful people do, and charismatic people have, and... They just have a drink here and there, you know, that's what they do. They go and they order their drink at the bar and they're sophisticated and they talk to the member of the opposite sex and everything goes really smoothly. And I mean, there are just tons and tons and tons and tons of examples of characters in movies, in, in TV shows that drink alcohol. And what always gets portrayed is that the alcohol is somehow helping them. You know, there's a stressful situation, they drink alcohol and things get a little bit better, a little bit easier. It's like they drink, ah. And what is happening is that exact same message gets portrayed through movies, through TV shows. Not all the time, don't get me wrong. Sometimes, you know, there's, there's like truthful stories out there where it shows the pain of alcohol. It shows the misery caused by alcohol. It shows the destruction that's caused by alcohol, the broken relationships, the messed up health, the destroyed business. There are movies out there that show this, but most of the time, that isn't the underlying message when you see alcohol in a movie or a TV show. And really what I urge you to do is whilst you're watching these TV shows, just kind of look and see if you can see it for what it is. See if you can see what's going on there. You'd be extremely surprised. And these days, you know, I'll be watching a TV show, I'll be watching a movie, and I've got to be very mindful. Because sometimes, you know, you can start to really like a character in a movie. You can start to almost admire a character. You know, if there's a good experiment you can do, and if you actually think of your favorite film, your favorite film of all time, it's very often the, 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 the reason why you have this film as your favorite film is because you see yourself as the main character in the film. So what we can do is we can start to watch these things and we can really fall in love with a character and just like, this, girl, this person's awesome. Then we see them drinking. And we think, well, you know, we can almost start buying into the idea of, well, if this character did all these things and they're drinking and blah, blah, blah. And we buy into it again. We buy into the illusion of it being a good thing. 
And this is a very subtle thing. We don't really realize this is going on, but I really do urge you to kind of take that almost like you go like into a third person perspective and see yourself watching these inputs and just try and be mindful of what it's doing. Now, the third and final place that I want to touch on is the normal drinker. Now, I've made many videos talking about these normal drinkers in the past. And a normal drinker is a person that has one or two drinks and they say that they can take it or leave it. They have one or two drinks and their life seems completely under control. Alcohol doesn't cause any issues. They're not a problem drinker. And what what the, the perception of this person is that they have no issues with drinking. Now, I just want to say one thing here, and I've never really shared this before. But through speaking with members of the Sober Clear program, you know, when they're, when they're interested in stopping drinking and getting in control of their drinking and they want to join the program because they want to do it in that positive, optimistic way, a lot of the time they say, Leon, you know, my friends have got no idea that I drink this much. You know, I even hide it from my wife. I hide it from my husband. They just don't know. And you would be surprised how many people appear to be a normal drinker and they've got a problem. The thing is, is they just don't show it. Now, that's not really related to this point, but I just wanted to tell you that because, you know, I was even surprised how many people told me that. But what I'm saying is the, that what we can start doing is we can start looking at these people that have one or two drinks and then appear to have their life in order and we can start to want to be like them. Because what they're going to start saying is, you know, I enjoy a drink. I just love it. I love the taste. You know, it just pairs really well with food and all of this other stuff. And still, the underlying message, if we start buying into these people, is that alcohol is a good thing. And listen, I could make a hundred examples of this, but it's a, I don't want to make the video go on for three days, right? There are so many inputs that go into us as people that somehow alcohol is good and it's difficult to stop doing. It's difficult to control. And what ends up happening is because we get so many inputs from people that we admire, from people that we like, from whatever, is we start to think that surely all of these people can't be wrong. It's impossible. The majority can't be wrong. There is no way that all of these tens of thousands, hundreds, millions of people can be wrong. It's impossible. And this is a prime example of doing something called reasoning from analogy. And what reasoning from analogy is, is it's making an educated guess on something. What we do is we look for common knowledge, you know, what would typically be seen as common sense. And what is classed as common sense when it comes to alcohol? Well, common sense is that you should drink the recommended daily allowance. Common sense is that you shouldn't drink too much. Common sense is that you should successfully moderate your drinking. And it's pretty common knowledge that alcohol helps you relax, it helps you have a good time, it's, it's, it's a fun thing, it's a pleasure. Expensive drinks are even more enjoyable. And when we reason from analogy, that is the conclusion and that is the worldview that we end up creating. And that was the worldview that I held for 10 years. It didn't matter if I went to AA, it didn't matter if I was using willpower, it didn't matter if I was watching videos, I still had this underlying belief that alcohol was valuable. It was a good thing. So every time that I tried to take it away, it was painful, it was difficult, and I didn't like it. I always wanted it back in my life because I thought it was decent. You know, there's, there, are example, there are many examples in history of people that have reasoned from analogy and just not just made a small mistake, but got things completely, completely wrong. I mean, you can look at plenty of wars that have gone on in the past where this has been the case. You can think of the Aztecs that used to chop people's heads off and roll it down a hill because they thought the sun would keep growing across the sky. I mean, you've got the flat earth, you've got witchcraft, you've got all of these things where people were just fully bought in to the idea and they would do the most ridiculous things. That may, might have meant killing people, it might have meant destroying things. And in this case, it might mean drinking a poison and literally killing your body, killing your confidence and just destroying lives. And the only real conclusion and the only real thing that you can do is critical thinking, right? This is the only thing is the answer to pretty much most problems is we just think critically and we reason from first principles. We look at all of the information and we just start questioning it. We start saying, is this true? And hey, I'm going to say the most cringe thing on the channel, but the truth will seriously set you free. It's the only thing that will set you free when it comes to seeing alcohol for what it is. And you've really got to understand the truth. And like I just said, that is done from reasoning from first principles. And when you're able to build a paradigm where you see it without the illusion of it being a good thing, without the illusion of it doing anything good for you, it's simple. You then make the decision to not drink. And if you want my help doing that, make sure to click the link in the description. Have a great day.